Consider this coordinate system. This is the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. Now, if this green line here represents a string, then the wave traveling through this string is easy to visualize because you could clearly picture the amplitude of this string. Remember that if this is the wave, then this is the equilibrium position of the wave. And if this is the highest point of the wave, then its distance from the equilibrium position is actually called the amplitude. And this highest position is called the crest. And the lowest point of the wave with respect to the equilibrium position is called the trough. And the distance of the crest or trough from the equilibrium position, this A here, is called the amplitude. Now the distance of one wave cycle, for example, the origin to one complete wave cycle is called wavelength and it can also be measured as the distance from crest to crest. So this is actually one wavelength or it can be also, if I extend this, it can be also the distance from trough to trough. So this is also one wavelength. So you can measure wavelength in different ways as long as it represents the distance of one complete wave cycle. And the time it takes for one complete wave cycle is called a period. If this axis represents time instead of a y-axis, then this point to this point is actually equivalent to one period. So this point to this point is actually equivalent to one period. So how do we visualize electromagnetic wave? Remember that electromagnetic wave literally consists of electric field vectors and magnetic field vectors propagating in space. So for example, an electric field vector vibrates along the z-axis. For example, we have a bunch of electric field vectors that is vibrating or varying along the z-axis. So let me represent it with this vector. So these arrows here represent electric field vectors. And this could actually happen when you have, for example, an electron and it moves this way and then after some time it moves this way. So it's vibrating along the z-axis. So eventually it also generates an electric field that is varying along the z-axis. This can be an electron or any charge object. When our imaginary charge object moves along the z-axis, it actually generates an electric field that propagates in all direction but we will just focus on the electric field that moves along the positive y-axis. When the charge moves along the z-axis and this electric field propagates along the positive y-axis, then this electric field is represented by this increasing portion of the electric field vectors. However, when the charge moves downward, then eventually the propagated electric field moves this way. So I'm actually just trying to draw a snapshot of these electric field vectors. However, through Ampere's law, from our previous lectures, we have written the general form of Ampere's law. In Ampere's law, when you have a time-varying electric field, it also generates electric field vectors. Based on the equation we derive, it is always perpendicular with the uh, electric field vectors. In this example, when you have a very strong electric field, it also generates a large magnitude of magnetic field vector. And the same goes on here. Apparently, this Magnetic field vectors are also time-varying. As they propagate in space, since they are time-varying magnetic field, they also generate a time-varying electric field. As these magnetic field vectors propagate in space like this, and then it moves this way, and it moves this way, it also generates a time-varying electric field. So somehow, this electric field generates this magnetic field, and this magnetic field propagates in space. It also somewhat strengthens these electric field vectors because by Faraday's law, this time-varying magnetic field also generates electric field vectors. So in a way, they somewhat reinforce each other in an infinite manner, assuming that they travel in vacuum because if they are traveling through a uh, physical medium, for example, a crystal, something like that, then eventually they will die down because the energy possessed by these electric field vectors and magnetic field vectors will be absorbed by the atoms and molecules of such medium. But assuming they are traveling in space, then they can actually reinforce each other. Uh, Time-varying electric field produces 
a magnetic field and a time varying magnetic field produces an electric field so this is how we visualize electromagnetic wave to determine its direction you just have to get the cross product between e and b and in other lectures you multiply one over mu naught here this is actually equal to vector s and this vector s is called the pointing vector to determine the direction of electromagnetic wave you just have to calculate for this cross product and the direction of the resulting vector dictates the direction of the electromagnetic wave so in case you know the direction of the pointing vector and the direction of magnetic field then you could actually predict the direction of the electric field vectors and the same goes if you know the direction of the pointing vector or the direction of electromagnetic wave and we know the direction of the electric field vector then we could actually predict the direction of the magnetic field vectors using this formula in discussing electromagnetic waves we could just actually represent an electromagnetic wave with a simple wave like this and it is understood that we're actually either referring to the electric field vectors variation of electric field vectors or the variation of magnetic field vectors but in our class when i draw a wave like this that represent electromagnetic wave then it is understood that i'm discussing the electric field vectors and you'll just automatically assume that there is also a magnetic field vector along this wave but for simplicity again i'm just talking about the electric field vectors when i draw a simple wave like this but you could actually also represent an em wave using just the variation of magnetic field vectors Vectors. Either way, it is safe to represent EM waves with a simple illustration like this because a time varying electric field generates a magnetic field and a time varying magnetic field generates an electric field. So it is safe to assume that when I represent electromagnetic waves, I just represent it with a simple wave like this. And it's up to you if you try to imagine that amplitudes here represents the magnitude of electric field vector or the amplitude of magnetic field vector so that's how we visualize em waves this can actually represent electric field vectors or magnetic field vectors either way just always remember that a time varying electric field generates magnetic field and a time varying magnetic field generates electric field so for simplicity we just represent an electromagnetic wave with a simple illustration like this don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and hit the notification bell button for awesome updates. Thank you for watching.